Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me today. Today is Sunday, December 13th. We are coming very close to Christmas Day. Today, being the third Sunday of Advent, we celebrate joy. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for hope, peace, and joy. We pray you will fill us not only with these beautiful attributes, but also with love. May the light of Jesus shine ever bright in our lives, so when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate what it is truly about, Christ. And may this light and spirit of celebration be with us every day, so that we may be bearers of good news all year long. Thank you, Lord, for your word, which brings hope, peace, joy, love, and light to the world. Amen. All scripture verses that I use today will be from the Good News Bible. When we want to spread a little joy, we think of being kind to someone perhaps bringing them an unexpected treat or gift to share a little happiness that uh, they weren't expecting in their day. When you present them with the present, they might respond with, you have brought me much joy today. It sure does a heart good to be a blessing to someone. Joy can come in many ways. Joy means happiness and delight. In the dictionary, joy is described as a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Joy is so powerful that it can bring us to tears. Perhaps you've heard the phrase, tears of joy. We can experience so much happiness that we cry at the pleasure of the moment, such as at a wedding or at the birth of a newborn or watching our children graduate. To me, spiritual joy is knowing and having God's goodness with me. Even in the most challenging times of life. During these trying times, God's word in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 promises us that we can still have joy. It says, the joy that the Lord gives you will make you strong. Our strength comes from Him, and knowing God will see us through to glory. Psalm 16, verse 11 also reminds us of joy. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. What a joy it is to serve God and know that this brings pleasure to him and to us. Joy comes when we serve others, putting them before ourselves. Jesus did precisely this. He brought joy to the world, beginning on the very night he was born. We see the beauty of Jesus throughout his entire life. From a babe in a manger to a small boy exploring the world around him. Growing into a young adult who would bring much teaching into the world. And finally, as a young man who willingly gave up his life for our everlasting joy. On the night of Christ's birth, an angel said to the shepherds, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And that comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. So today, 
we understand the birth of Jesus as good tidings of great joy. Joy comes into our lives in many ways. Perhaps it will come to you as you share time with a friend or when you simply get a hug from a loved one. Maybe it'll come when you treat yourself to that special something that you have waited for, for a while. Or when you can give someone that special thing that they have waited for, for themselves. Or perhaps it'll come when you help someone in need, a friend or a stranger. Or when you rescue an animal from a shelter. It can come for any reason and at any time of the day. Joy is there when you see a beautiful sunrise or feel the fresh dew on spring grass. When you hear the song of a bluebird or you see the beauty of the ocean waves on a hot summer day and you feel them wash over your feet. Joy is there at a sunset or when you share a meal and prayers with friends. While tucking your baby into bed and perhaps reading or singing a song with them, your baby or little one so appreciates that time and what joy it brings to you and to them. Perhaps there's great joy in sitting with your loved one and sharing a hot drink with your sweetie. Joy is there when you go to bed after a busy day and you give all praise and prayers to God before drifting off into a beautiful, peaceful sleep. All of this is joy. <laughs> First Chronicles chapter 16 verses 26 and 27 reads, the gods of all other nations are only idols, but the Lord created the heavens. Glory and majesty surround him. Power and joy fill his temple. When one day we see the Lord face to face, we will understand the glory and majesty that surround him. And we will stand in the very presence of his power and the joy that fills his temple. What a beautiful thought and what a joy it is to await such a day as this. In the parable of the lost sheep, Luke chapter 15 verse 7, Jesus told those to whom he was speaking with that day that there will be great joy in heaven he said, in the same way I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 respectable people who do not need to repent. Great joy comes to the Father who loves us and forgives us and wants us to be his very own when we truly accept him in our heart. Matthew chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 tells us of the visitors from the east that came to see the baby Jesus. And so they left, and on their way they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were. What joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. What joy was theirs? Can you even imagine being there on the night of Jesus' birth? The feeling that would have filled our hearts and the tears that would have filled our eyes would have been an exceedingly and extraordinary great joy. I can imagine standing there, wanting to pick him up and hold him in my arms 
and I can imagine never wanting to leave his side. Perhaps the visitors felt the very same way. I pray this Christmas that your heart will have exceeding great joy, an extraordinary joy, in knowing Christ and receiving the gift of salvation which he has brought to everyone on earth who will receive. I wish everyone the hope, peace, and joy of Christ at Christmas, and may hope, peace, and joy carry you through the year ahead. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the joy that comes from you. No greater joy can we possibly know on this earth than to know the joy that you bring to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We accept the gift of salvation that he came to bring to each one of us as we accept him as Lord and Savior. May the joy of Christ fill our hearts, and may we share this joy with everyone we meet, not only at Christmas, but all year through. Amen. <laughs> well, I trust today that this message on joy has touched your heart as God intended it to do. And next week, we will look at love as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. I would ask that you would please join us at that time. Thank you for taking time today to listen to the message and to receive what God has specifically sent to you, a message that he sent through the messenger and I stood in today as the messenger. So I, I pray that God touched your heart today and that you see this Christmas season <clears throat> as different from all Christmases past and, and not just because of COVID, but mainly because this year we have an opportunity to spend much more time with Jesus than we have before. In years gone by, the commercialism of Christmas seemed to always take over, and this year it is very quiet and needs to be for our own safety as we continue to uh, listen to and participate in the uh, protocols of which we're being given. I pray that as families get together this year, they will keep those numbers small and perhaps settle in and talk more about Jesus and understand that he is the true gift of Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. So I thank you for listening today and I pray that you'll stay close to the website as tomorrow Spencer will have um, his something to think about and Tuesday he will have the Bible study in Ecclesiastes which she's moving along. Wednesday I will have a uh, written message and Thursday Peter will have Peter's picks and Friday Pastor Todd's message will come. So I pray that as you tune into the website you will find lots there to uh, bring you close to Christ and to keep you close to Christ. If there's anyone watching today who does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, uh, I pray that this Christmas you will accept him. And perhaps you would join me now in prayer, and even this day would be the gift that you would receive. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, for anyone who's listening to my voice today and does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray that they would just bow their heads now and pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Lord, for seeing me kneeling before you today. I am a sinner and I need a Savior. And Jesus was born over 2,000 years ago 
to come and be my Savior. What a joy it is to know that I can be accepted into the family of God because of what he did for me. And so, Father, today I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for loving me, guiding me, and allowing me to be who you see me to be. Lord, change how I live my life now and direct me in the path of which Christ would have me to walk. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer today, God heard your cry of the heart, and now you can say, I am a member of the family of God. What joy there is in that, and welcome to our family. I trust that you'll have a good week ahead. Stay connected with your family and your friends. Perhaps you have to do it by phone or video or FaceTime. Maybe they're near, maybe they're far. But however uh, the case would be, I trust that you will stay connected with them. Enjoy the week ahead and uh, be kind to someone and bring a little joy into someone else's life. And in turn, you will feel that joy immensely within yourself. Have a very good week ahead. God bless you. And we'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you. Bye-bye.